Welcome to the Institutional African Methodist Company. Hold on. I had a cough drop. <laughs> We're better off just before I choke on the cough drop. All right. Welcome to the Institutional African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. I don't know about you, but we are here today to worship the Lord. There's been so much going on in our lives, so much going on in the world, but we are here today to worship the Lord. I've dealt with my job all week. I've dealt with my family, my co-workers, my neighbors, but today I'm here to worship the Lord. I may have sickness in my body. I may be a little discouraged in my mind. I may just need a little bit of rest because I'm just so tired. But today, today, we worship Christ our Lord. We lift our hands to thee today. We worship Christ our Lord.
in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals.
as we continue in worship, it is now time for us to responsibly read the Word of God together. The responsive reading is in your order of worship and is also up on the screen. We pray that you will sing along, that you will read along with us. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God. To teach his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And three are in agreement. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in Whoever has the Son has life. And let us read together. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. For just in a very little while, 
He who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. All glory and honor unto God. And now that we have heard from the Word of God, it is our opportunity now to go to God and to speak to Him, knowing that He hears us and surely will answer on our behalf. But before we pray, let us prepare our hearts to speak to God and also to hear. And so Brother Gibbs will now sing our prayer hymn, something within me. Sing along, meditate along, but let the words of the song remind you of God's Spirit within you. Preachers and teachers would make their peace fighting as soldiers on great battlefields when to their pleading my poor heart did yield. All I can say there is something within. Something within me that holdeth the reins. Something within me that vanishes pain. Something within me. I cannot explain all that I know there is something within. Father God, why should I feel discouraged? And why should the Why should my heart be lonely and yearn for heaven and my home when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches over me. Lord, just as we are today, we come to you in our brokenness, in our discouragements, in our hurt, in our pain, in all that is going on around us. And yes, Lord, we ask the question why. But because, Lord, there is something within us, we know, God, that whatever state we find ourselves in, that you, God, are watching over us. So, Lord, it's with thanksgiving today that we come before you and, God, we just pour it all at the foot of the cross today. And, God, we thank you for how you have been with us all week long. You said in your word, God, that if we look at the birds, how you keep them. If we look at the lilies, how you keep them? And you ask us the question, Lord, aren't we much more valuable than they? But we are your children, God. And we know that you are watching over us. And God, we pause now. 
And while, God, we may feel this week that we have not done anything not pleasing in your sight, we say, forgive us. Because even though we felt that we have done everything right, there were moments that we were fearful. There were moments that we doubted. Yes, Lord, there were moments that we even became angry and agitated. So God, forgive us of all of our sins and unrighteousness. And as always, God, we ask that you help us to forgive others who have trespassed against us. So God, thank you for a forgiving spirit. Thank you for creating in us a clean heart that we can worship you, not only in spirit and in truth, but in the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Father. And God, we lift up this worship experience to you. We thank you, God, for allowing us another opportunity to come together in the midst of such craziness, God, that we can lift our voices up and sing praises to your name. For God, we know you are in the midst of it. We cannot see your hand moving, God, but our faith and our belief, our trust is in you, God. We know you've already gone before us to make the pathway straight. So God, be with us today. And as always, God, we thank you for all. The shepherd of the flock, we thank you, God. We ask that you continue to lead, guide him in the way that you will have him to go. Undergird him, Lord, with your mighty, righteous right hand upon him. And then, God, as he follow you, help us to follow him. God, we lift up the members of this church. We thank you for all of them. We thank you, God, for how you just keep blessing us over and over and over again, God. We say thank you. And God, we ask that you continue to keep your mighty hand on this church, on this community. Blessed Lord, as only you can. We lift up the sick among us today, God. There are many, God, but you know who they are. Meet them, Lord, just where they are. Let them know, God, that they are not alone. They may be a little lonely, but let them know, God, that you are with them. And God, I pause to lift up the Yugi family today. Oh God, bless that family. Oh God, as they continue to look for a daughter who found it for whatever reason, it brought daylight to climb down three floors and run away from home. God, touch that family, touch that child. Oh God, we pray for family today. Oh God, keep us together in your high priestly prayer, my Lord. You said your prayer is that you would not take us out of the world, but that we would become one as you and the Father are one. So God, help us as families to become on one accord for your people. Oh God, for the world to see. Thank you, God, for family today. Oh God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing. And God, we just glorify your name. We just worship you. Lord, if you never do anything else for us, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough for what you have already done. Your words say, morning by morning, new mercies we see. So great, God, is your faithfulness unto us. Yes, God, we're still going through. And we will continue to go through until you come again. But we thank you, God, that we have a resting place. Oh, hallelujah. 
that we can run to your bosom like the poor man resting in Abraham's bosom, God. Woo. Thank you, God, that we know you. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God. Oh, God, even in the midst of our struggles, we can look up and say hallelujah. Amen to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So, God, we say thank you today. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, that you are doing and will continue to do, God. For we ask it in your name. Amen, amen, and amen.
He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's a warrior on the battlefield. You better know for yourself. If you don't know, you better know. September, 
six months later, I'm realizing that my plan of this thing being over in a couple of months was not God's plan. I never expected that there'd be 28 million infected worldwide and almost 1 million deaths worldwide. And I never, definitely didn't expect that there would be six and a half million cases in the United States and to this date, 197,410 people dead in the so-called greatest country in the world. I never expected that we still wouldn't be traveling, that the schools still wouldn't be open, that we still would be social distancing and wearing masks. And I definitely never expected back in March that by September we still would not be in the sanctuary. And that's why it's easy to give up. It's easy to say that I've just, I've had enough of this. It's easy to feel that, that there's nothing we can do, so why bother doing anything? Just pass me the remote control, switch the channel away from the news, and put on the real Housewives of Potomac. Then the only thing I have to worry about is which woman is going to gossip about which other woman. That sense of discouragement is something that we all feel. There are times in our lives when we feel like we can conquer the world, and then there are times in our lives when we feel as if the world has conquered us. But what does the Bible say about discouragement? The Bible says God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Bible says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible says that we are pressed on every side, but not crushed perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. It's good. It's good for us to concentrate on the latter part of those verses. Wounds are bound, yes. God sustains me, yes. God gives me rest, yes. Not crushed, not in despair, not abandoned, not destroyed. Yes, 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 yes. But sometimes I find myself focusing on the first parts of the verse. Broken hearted, burdened, heavy laden, pressed on every side, crushed, perplexed, persecuted struck down. It's not, it's not something that we like talking about. But suffering is part of the Christian experience. Abraham suffered. Isaac suffered. Jacob suffered. Moses suffered. David suffered. Isaiah suffered. Simon Peter suffered. The Apostle Paul suffered, and yes, you know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ suffered. There are none of us who hasn't gone through something, isn't going through something now, or will go through something soon. You see, being a Christian doesn't make you immune from trouble, but it does, and it, I'm telling you it should. Being a Christian should make you immune from trouble hopelessness. The writer of Hebrews says it this way, Remember those earlier days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood by the side of those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better 
and lasting possessions. What are my better and lasting possessions? I'll tell you, it's the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's a better and lasting possession. It's the boldness to go before the throne of God. Yes, that's, that's a better and lasting possession. It's the unconditional, everlasting love of God. Yes, that's better. It's the joy unspeakable that the world didn't give me and the world can't take away. It's the grace and mercy of the Lord following me, pursuing me. Yes, it's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's the wonder-working power of the Lamb of God. The better and lasting possession is eternal life with my God and my Savior. Hmm. See, one day, this pandemic will be over. And we'll look back on this time. We'll remember all the stuff we had to go through. And we definitely will remember those who we lost, those who passed away during this time. But more so, we'll remember that God made a way out of no way. We'll remember that God gave rest to the weary and strength to the lame. We'll remember that God did not give us, allow us to wallow in a spirit of fear, but God gave us a spirit of power and love and a strong mind. We'll remember that God was our refuge and our strength. God was a very present help in the time of the struggle. We'll remember, we'll remember that God kept us so that we wouldn't let go. Don't let go. Don't give up. Don't turn back. Verse 35 says, Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. I know it's hard sometimes to, to see those rewards, but the Bible is telling us that we must persevere. We must keep moving forward. We must keep trusting God. That's the only way we'll receive what God has promised us. But I understand it's hard sometimes. I've been there. There have been times in my life when I have turned back. We all have times in our life when we seem to drift away from God. You used to pray every day, but now you only pray when you need something. You used to read your Bible every day, but now you only read scripture if someone posts it on Facebook. You used to watch the worship video on Sunday morning, but now you get to it on Wednesday or Thursday or sometime at the end of the week. And you used to watch the worship video from the beginning all the way to the end, but now you just listen to the choir with Brother Gibbs and is singing, and when the preacher comes on, you just fast forward through that sermon. I better not be talking to anybody. <laughs> Amen. You see, listen, here's the thing. The devil knows that your victory is found in God. Yeah. The devil knows that, that you can overcome anything he throws in your path when you are walking with God. The devil knows that you have it in you to do great things for God. So the devil, that prince of lies, seeks to weaken you by making you think that you're not getting anywhere, that nothing is happening, that God has forgotten about you. But look around you. Look at what God is doing in your life. Look at what God is doing in you. Despite it all, you're still here. You may not be everything that you're supposed to be, but you're still here. You may not, you may still have a lot of work to do, but you are still here. It took courage to remain. It took strength to remain. It took perseverance to remain. It took patience to remain. It took tenacity to remain. And most of all, it took faith. It took faith to still be praising God after all that's been going on. Preach. You see, verse 38, verse 38 says, this is God speaking, my righteous one will live by faith. 
and, and I take no pleasure. God is saying that he takes no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Why would anyone turn back? I'll tell you, because they're having a crisis of faith. They've waited on the Lord, but they just can't wait anymore. You saw in the verse, God said that he was coming in a little while, and that he wouldn't delay. But, but I can't take any more of this. I can't do any more waiting. And then they decided to take matters into their own hands. They've decided to rely on themselves instead of relying on God. And so then instead of worshiping God, we worship our jobs, we worship our families, we worship material goods, we worship our own ab ab ambitions. Those are the things that we put our faith in. We worship those things that satisfy us for a minute instead of the one who satisfies us for all eternity. We turn back because we're prone to wander. Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. We turn back because we forget what peace we often forfeit, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We turn back because we don't see his awesome wonder and we don't consider all the worlds that God's hands have made. We don't see the stars, we don't hear the rolling thunder, and we don't see God's power through the universe displayed. We turn back because in our moment of struggle, we turn away from God instead of turning toward God and saying, how great thou art. But God takes no pleasure in those who turn away from his greatness. Your material possessions aren't great. God is great. Your money and your bank accounts aren't great. God is great. Your titles, your accolades aren't great. No, God is great. Your degrees and your professional licenses aren't great. God is great. Your accomplishments aren't great. God is great. Your gifts and your talents aren't great. God is great. Is there anybody here who knows that they know that they know that God is great and greatly to be praised? There's a story about a village in Africa that was going through a drought. They waited and they waited and they waited, but no rains came. So they decided that they had to send somebody to look for water. The king was a strong man, broad shoulders, tall and muscular. He was a great warrior and he was an excellent hunter. I will go find water, he said. And so he set out across the parched land. He traveled for days and days. He went beyond the outskirts of his kingdom, but he had to turn back. There was no water. The villagers, they started rejoicing when they, when they saw him in the distance, but as he got closer, they saw the forlorn look on his face. When he approached them, he, said, he says, I got as far as the great baobab tree, but I could go no further. I had to turn back. So the queen, the queen was a wise woman, the wisest in the land. She had dazzled all the elders with her intelligence and her wit. I will go find water, she said. And so she set out across the parched land. She traveled for weeks and weeks. She went beyond the outskirts of her kingdom, but she had to turn back. There was no water. The village started rejoicing when they saw her in the distance, but as she got closer, they saw the forlorn look on her face. I got as far as the base of the great mountain, she said, but I could go no further. I had to turn back. The village resigned themselves to death. This drought had just been going on for too long. But then a young boy said, I will go and find water. The villagers didn't even have the energy to tell him that he was a foolish young boy. If the strong king and the wise queen couldn't find water, then why did he think he could? But nevertheless, they let him go on his way. The boy set out across the parched land. He passed the baobab tree. 
he didn't turn back. He got to the base of the great mountain. He didn't turn back. And he found water. The villagers couldn't believe their eyes when they saw him returning with his water sacks bulging. Where did you find water, they asked. He told them, I got to the baobab tree, and I didn't turn back. I got to the base of the great mountain, and I didn't turn back. I wanted to. I was tired, but thirsty and discouraged. I saw some elephants and deer and zebras heading through a pass in the mountain, and I decided to follow them. I had gotten only so far on my strength and my wisdom. Perhaps these animals knew something that I didn't. And when I followed these animals, they led me to a volcanic cavern in the mountain that was overflowing with water. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You see, you're, you're going through a hard time right now. You may feel like this drought is never ending. You have done all that you can and you feel like you can't do anymore. You've gone as far as your strength will take you and you just can't take another step. But now is not the time to turn back. Your breakthrough is coming in just a little while. So don't turn back from praising God. Don't turn back from serving God. Don't turn back from glorifying God. Don't turn back from honoring God. Don't turn back from obeying God. Don't turn back from seeking God. And don't turn back from loving God. Just keep on going. Keep pressing further. And when you reach the point that you don't know which, which way to turn, then just follow Jesus. Follow Jesus to your healing. Follow Jesus to your deliverance. Follow Jesus to your freedom. Follow Jesus to your provision and your sustenance. Follow Jesus to your victory. Follow Jesus to salvation. Because I don't know about you, but I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. No turning back. I won't turn back. And I know you won't turn back. Because we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed. No. We belong to those who have faith and are saved. No turning back. 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 I have decided to follow Jesus in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Stay strong. Yeah. Stay faithful. Yeah. Make this your 
mantra that there is no turning back. Because we already know that what God has in front of us is better than whatever was behind us. You know this verse already. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah said that back then and that still applies today. We've just got to get whatever faith we can to be strong enough to not turn back. But here's the thing, that we can get so much, only so far on our own strength, on our own wisdom. We've got to follow the one, the only righteous one, the one true Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. We've got to follow Jesus. Yes. That's our path to victory. That's our path to overcoming. That's our path to peace and salvation. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I, I pray that you already know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But if you don't, please let today be the day. Even right where you are, let today be the day that you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me just lead you in this little prayer. You can repeat after me. Lord my God, I have decided that I'm going to follow Jesus. Not going to do it myself. Not going to rely on myself. I'm going to rely on you, God. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe you raised him from the dead. I believe you raised him from the dead. And I believe that you have a gift of salvation for me. And I believe that you have a gift of salvation for me. So come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Make me change me. Make me Make me, new. Make me new. And I will follow you. And I will follow you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Amen. And if you said that prayer just like that, you are saved. What you need to do next is just get yourself a Bible-believing church somewhere. I know it's quarantine and not all churches are open. You can continue watching us. Um, there are other resources available to you, but and if you want help from us, we'd love to walk along this journey with you. Please email us. Send us an email um, at our website, www.inchurch.org. We want to make sure that all the next steps that you take are those that will strengthen you, encourage you, and help you along the journey so that there will be no doubt when the struggles come, there will be no turning back. Come on, brother, get some choir and sing. to be 
steadfast and unmovable with your giving, knowing that you will receive a reward. You're already being rewarded. So if you are led to give, please visit our website, www.inchurch.org. Once you're there, you can hit the donate button and you can give by PayPal or time. And if you want to write a check, you can do that also. Write your checks out to Institutional AM Design Church, and you can mail them to us. Our address is on the website. Or if you're in the area, you can drop them in our mailbox. But however you give, we want to say thank you. We're appreciative, and our prayers is that God will bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think, because you didn't give up and because you remain faithful. Amen. Amen. And so with that, we have come to the end of our worship. Let me tell you, my prayer from this point on to the rest of the week will be, Lord, I don't want to preach about coronavirus anymore. But I have to do what the Lord tells me. And I think that even in this times, even six months later, we, I need to be encouraged. I don't know about you, but I still need to be encouraged. So I pray that you are encouraged today. No turning back. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and present us blameless in his presence with exceeding great joy. To God our Father who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore.